Okay. Good. So now this is the Android Studio where you have the choice to see all the existing apps that we create or you work on, lab one, lab two, lab three, or any other apps you like. For example, this is zero one we created last time. You can open the existing lab in your workspace, or you can even sometimes import some Android code samples from Google uh, to work with. I told you last time that before Android Studio, people used to have clips and they have to store some add-ons. So even Android Studio gives you the capability to bring an old version app that you develop using clips and import it to Android Studio. But you have to keep in your mind that Android Studio, uh, I mean, clips is no longer maintained. So nobody is using clips anymore to develop the app. But in case, if you come across some app already very old programming app, use clips, still you can bring that apps if you like and integrate it with Android Studio. Now let's go back to the app we worked together last lectures. Now you can see here, this is the structures of the, on this side, this is the structures of the app folders. I can change the view from the project view to the Android view and they have a different uh, view. So you can see most times you're gonna use the Android view. And under Android view, you can see there is a manifest XML file which is contains most of the controls that we use once we run the apps. And also there is a Java folders where you have the Java classes. And we have the Android test which is use once you develop your app, you need to put any test scenario, uh, simulate the end user scenario interacting with your app, or you have the JUnit test, we're gonna cover this on the class later on, how we can create the JUnit test and we will integrate it on the test folder. Resources folders will contain many information about the resource we use during developing of this app, figures, string conversions, multi-language, all of these information, colors, styles, all of these is part of the resources. Layout is considered one of the resources. And as you can see, this is the resources, activity underscore zero dot XML. Now, once you open this, you have two sides here on the buttons, the tabs. And these tabs, either to see the design view, or you can see the text view. In the text view, as you can see here, it's a pure XML file. This is XML file, it starts with the tags, buttons, and end the tags. And all of these values or attributes you can call associated with these tags. All these attributes are gonna contribute to the view of these buttons on the tab. So, back to the computer, you can see the slide where we can go over this quickly. So, we have two ways. The first one, which is the SDK development of the apps, we're not gonna cover in these lectures or in this course. So, we're gonna go to XML, option number two, where we're gonna use tags to design the view for the apps. So whenever you are starting with any project, as you can see here, you will have the view of the project and there is one displayed on the screen, which is called Hello World. This one is just the startup. You can delete it and you can start. This is the view balance and these are the component tree and here is the parameter or attribute associated with this view. As you can see, this view text is a selected, so all these attributes is associated with this one. So this is the XML, this is the style design, or you can go to the text. This is the tree where the text view is selected, and this is the text view inside the view 
Now, all the probabilities of the view is shown to the left side. You can switch between some selected or recommended from Android Studio attributes to the main or all the attribute by pressing these two arrow, side arrow on the left side. So you can switch between the recommended or selected list to all probabilities or all attribute list by clicking to this that now. Now, once you select the layout, as we discussed last time, we have different layout, different constraint. When you design your app, you want them to be vertically aligned or you want them horizontally aligned. You can put a layout inside another layout to organize your view, user interface items. So once we select the layout, as you can see this attributes here, they are, in terms of the width and the height, they are match the pivot, which means they are matching actually the width and the height of Android device. Whenever I run the app on any different Android device with different height and width, this layout will match the height and width of the given Android device. Now, you can see here, we have selected the text view and these are some attributes like text inside the text view is hello world and also you can see the constraint of this to the four sides from the top and bottom to the left and right now all these it can be manipulated directly using this simple view here and you can manipulate all these constraints you can make this to the left or right or to the buttons and you can see also there is an id given to any user interface item you add to your view. This is the corresponding HTML, uh, sorry, XML file to this view. As you can see, it's already constrained. And if we read the XML together, you can see there is no ID given to this text view right now. The only thing is you can see here the width and the height are actually the wrap the content. So the width and the height of this text view is going to match the content. But in terms of the layout constraint, as you can see, it's only matching the parents from the top and the to left to right and to buttons. The text inside it is hello world. So I would like you, whenever you look at the XML, you can have some develop some intuition about what is going on on that really designed view. Every Android XML is going to start, as you can see, with the tag and closing the tags at the end. And this type of the tag is Android.support.constraint.constraint layout. We open the tag and then we provide all the attributes and we put in, inside this constraint some view. And we end the tag by backslash sorry, forward slash, to close the Android support constraint layout. This is the beginning of the tag for the text view, and this is the end. And all the ones inside, as you can see, is attribute associated with this text view. Now, let's say we just added this text view to the design for our app. We just drag drop text view to this view. And as you can see here, there is nothing constrained for this. What is the ID? The ID is text view also. So we can see that XML corresponding to the previous text view. There is no thing much information here. You see the ID, Android, colon, ID, every user interface item you add to the view has a unique ID because we're going to use that later on on the Java program to catch up the content or display some content to this text view. So every ID you add to the view will have some ID. In this case, the ID is text view. We're going to see some apps where the ID is some meaningful ID where we can use. But the, right now, for just to illustrate, the corresponding between the design view and the XML view. 
you can see the width and the height is really fixed to 125 dp and the height to 43 dp the text inside it is the text view the tools and additionals for the it's an absolute position so that means this text view is actually at this location doesn't matter if you run it with the tablet or different Android devices, it will stay at this specific absolute locations. Now, let us try to change this by just constraint to the top and see the corresponding effect to the XML. So as you can see, the change here on the top, it's become the parent. So everything is the same except that now the text view is attached to the top of the parent, which is the layout in this case. Now, this is the layout margin, it's 38. The layout margin between this text view and the parent, in this case, the constraint layout. Let's go over the XML file and interface some tags. So each XML file gonna be correspond to three of elements. As you can see, we have the constraint layout. Inside it, there is a user interface items, and each one of them is a widget or a view we can use. Now, attribute of XML elements are probabilities and describe how the widgets will be appear on the text view. For example, if we have Android column text style equal between two double quotation bold on the buttons, which means the buttons will be bold. Let me go back to the view to demonstrate this for you. So here, this is the the view, I can zoom in to the view. I can delete this one, for example, the drag, drop the buttons on the middle. As you can see, this patterns is not constrained to the left or to the right or to the buttons or the top. I can constrain this patterns. I can give an ID. I can say this is pattern A, capital, or I can give any different name just for the purpose of demonstration. We're going to keep it like this. Now, as you can see here on the right side, this we can make a constraint to this, to the up, to the buttons, and to the left, to the right. And these are the margins. And there is an immediate effect of this on the XML file. I can go back to the design. I can change the text inside the buttons. I can change the style, the size of the text. I can make it bold, italic. I can do all these attributes and Every attribute I'm going to do it on the, this view, it has an effect on the XML file. You can see the size, bold and italic in terms of the styles, the margin to the top, the margin at the end, the width and the height, which is match the content of the buttons, the constraints that I'm at. The only things that you need always to remember. Whenever I'm going to do any click or drag and drop anything to the view, design a view, it will have a corresponding effect on the XML. We need you to know most of this, OK? I can change the background colors. I can change the text of colors here, 0, 0.
this will become a blue. We will discuss this on the slides. So I'll go back to the slides. So, all the XML come like a namespace. Take all the attributes from the XML NS, which is Android Studio, from Android HTTP schemes .android .apk, resources Android. All of them is inherited. All the items will be at children of this namespace. Now. It's important to recognize your view or user interface ID that you add to the design by give an ID, a meaningful ID. Because later on, when you come to that Java programming, you need to grab the content or attribute of this ID. So that's why we are focusing on the Android colon ID. To give a meaningful ID for each user interface item we added to the review. Here is an example. You can see we have the buttons with an ID, standard buttons. And even if you didn't change the ID, the Android Studio will make sure that any user interface you add to the design has a unique ID. So once you add the first buttons, will be buttons. The second one will be two, three, four, up to the end, if you didn't pay attention to the ID. And you can see here that some attributes belong to this buttons. The ID, and these are just a list, just a brief list about some Android Studio XML tags that we gonna go over or you're gonna use it during the development of your labs. Now, one of the things that is good to highlight here is the gravity. Android Studio gravity and Android layout gravity. So even for each, Android so on this Android as you can see let me here uh, on this app as you can see, this is the Java folders. Inside it, there is a folders where we can create the classes. And the Java Android Studio already create one class for us. It's called Zero Activity. So public class, Zero Activity, extend from app compact activity. This, we're going to keep it because once we run the app, will start executing this code on create. Now we can go back to the app, right click and ask a new Java class to create a new class. <coughs> and you can name the class. 